Hey guys, Stephen Gilbert here. Welcome to the Marketing Hour with Bill Hugall and Devin Zander and his beard. Hey. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about some interesting topics that we think you guys are really going to enjoy, particularly what it takes to do an insane launch like Ecom Premier Academy and some tips that you can take today and put into your business. So how you doing, Devin? Bill, welcome. Oh, hey, Stephen. Thank you for having me. So good to see you again. You too, it's buddy. Years since I've seen your beautiful face. In reality, it has been years. Well, since I've seen it in person. Yeah, <laughs> I, I used to have. I, I had a beard till yesterday, and then I shaved it. Okay, which was stupid because it's cold outside. Well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't think we we're gonna do video on this call. So now I look like a a fourteen year old male that's on a a, a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> So we should probably talk about Minecraft or something then. Yeah, yeah. So Devin, when playing Minecraft, what have you found is the most efficient way to come up with blocks? <laughs> Never played Minecraft. Don't know. I could get my little brother on call. He's 11. He loves Minecraft. <laughs> no, no. In all serious though, uh, thanks for being on, man. And um, I guess we'll just go ahead and start with a question. What would you say is the most important thing that you do when it comes to putting together a massive launch like Ecom Premier Academy? Like, what's the number one thing you keep in mind? Man, there's there's so many things that go into it. In reality, like I feel like there's three number one things, truthfully. So number one is like having a you have to establish a whole brand before you move into this, right? So the idea behind that is when people think brand, they're like, oh, yeah, we got a color scheme, we have a logo, and we'll make all the colors on this page, those three colors, and now we have a brand. And that's totally like that's like one one hundredth of what a brand actually should be. So when you're developing a brand, what you actually need are those things. Yes, you do need those things, but they're not as important as what it says. I mean, obviously, you want the colors and stuff because that's just like a remembrance thing. People see the colors. Hey, Brutus, people think of you. But then the biggest issue is the message. So what a brand has is a message, and that's kind of its soul. So everything your brand does and says or anywhere anybody sees your brand, they should instantly somehow see that message. So with Ecom Premier Academy, for example, the whole thing is we're all family, and we want you to succeed, basically. And um, I mean, it's true. It's we, although you know, we, do, we did do a ton of money on this launch, what we want to convey is we're actually losing money on this launch because in reality, you know, my partners here, <clears throat> they're doing like uh, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a day on Shopify. So, reality, the work that that we're putting in is actually losing us money. So, what we want to do is convey that in every single thing we do. Hey, we're only doing this because we want to see you succeed. That's all we want. We want to welcome you to our family. We want to bring you to our live events. We want to do all this just because we want to see you succeed, and that's what we're here for. And that's kind of something that. Um, you know, I do all of our marketing material and all that, so I try to convey that in every single thing. And we had uh, like four copywriters on staff, and I would have them write our emails, I would have them write our Facebook posts, um, and then you know our front end sales copy and all that stuff. And then I would just edit it and make it everything reflect our brand 100%. So if it was too hypey, got rid of it. We don't want hype stuff like that. We just want to focus on um, that feeling. So one of the biggest posts, or my favorite posts that we did, this one was to attract affiliate, was why do you create products? And um, let me see if I can pull that up. I just want to kind of give an example. This might go on a while, guys. It's, it, it's hard to simplify something that's not so simple, you know? No worries. So, okay. So we have this uh, long post here that we created to recruit affiliates. And, and in, uh, we ended up just using it as an email, but we've got it as a Facebook post as well. And it kind of went like this. Um, it's an image. Here, let me see. Um, maybe I can share my screen. Thank you. Uh, just no, I mean, I'll, your... I'll power you. Yeah, let me. Yeah, power. All right. Um... Yeah, I think you have to uh, make me a presenter. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead yeah. and slap organize because it's the first one I saw, so you're good to go now. Should have full capabilities. All right. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen now, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, hi, Kels. Sorry, girlfriend's shut down. Um, 
Okay, so the first thing was we had this why do you create products, and you'll notice that it got, um, this actually was all organic reach, which is pretty cool. Uh, we don't even have, I mean, this is just from affiliates seeing it. I mean, uh, 1,428, it's not a ton or whatever. Kels, can you close that? Um, and this is just to give an example of how we're conveying our brand's message. So, you know, the typical affiliate post would be like, hey, we have $50,000 in prizes, come promote us, we'll make you a lot of money. And it doesn't mention about your customers, their customers, how you care about them or anything. So then we came out with, I want to ask you a question. And it's a question I want you to think about from the heart as it's a question that has the potential to change the course of your life. It's why are you in this industry? Why do you do what you do and why did you choose the I am niche over all of the other niches? I'm going to be a bit presumptive and hear an answer for you because I have a pretty good idea of what your answer is going to be based on the color of people that are my friends here on Facebook. You're in this industry because you want to change lives. You've seen or perhaps you've even lived the transformation from the nine to five work slave to the freedom that is the internet lifestyle, okay? And no, I'm not talking about working one hour a day, working from a bench in your underwear. And then, oh, this is another huge thing is that we do tell people in Ecom Premier Academy and stuff, you know, this isn't push button money. We don't believe in that. We do believe in hard work. And if you want to change your life and change your situation, all you have to do is put in hard work. We're not saying it's going to be a ton of work. We're not saying you're going to slave away 20 hours a day, but it is work, right? And that's, a, that's also another huge message that we convey in everything we do. And I'm talking the freedom to do what you want, when you want, with whomever you want. The freedom to spend more time with your loved ones. Uh, the freedom to spend more time doing the things that you do love. It's truly amazing that it still surprises me every day I wake up and then, uh, you know, my family doesn't understand why I can't keep a track of what day it is or, you know, and I'm sure that happens to you guys a lot too. You're like, I didn't, I didn't know this, right? <laughs> and it's a big gift uh, that we as a community have to share with those less fortunate. Yeah. Okay, so I mean that's just an example. I don't want to read this whole thing here, but this is the kind of stuff that we do. We're not just talking um, about dollar signs and figures and all that. We're creating a brand. We're creating a feeling. You know, we're creating this soul, and it's something that people want to be a part of. And then once you do stuff like this, it kind of just sucks people in, right? So that's yeah, I, I kind of noticed you, you do a lot of emotional. Uh, you, you take a, a really emotional viewpoint. You know, hitting on. The fact that your your family and and um, really talking about <laughs> um, some of the things that internet marketers like us experience, like <clears throat> I I never realized it's a Friday ever. <laughs> like oh it's Friday oh, okay <laughs> yeah. weird. Wait till, you know, wait, I think, till the, wait till the little one grows up. That's when you start knowing the days. The only reason I have a clue what day it is is because I gotta get the kids to school for five of those days. But like, other than that, like halfway through the day, I'll, I don't necessarily know what day of the week it is, but you do like, they keep you on schedule. I don't know what's going to happen when they're gone. Like I'll have no clue like you guys. Yeah, man. And it's going to be a party. Don't worry. <laughs> the party is going to come. Yeah. So that's, that's like, that's the huge thing. And it, and then the next step is you take that brand, right? And you put it everywhere. Okay. Something that you think is not worth it is worth it. So, Stephen, uh, let me let me take this as an example here. You made the post about Munchai the other day and like you know tracking and all that. Yeah. Uh, right. So, uh, the the thing is is it's called omnipresence. You know, um, everywhere. Right. Be everywhere. So, that's something that you need to start doing is on your Facebook wall, ads, everything. Just be everywhere. Everywhere someone looks. And it's just because it's like an underlying psychological principle. Um, very subtly in the back of their head, the more people see you, the more they trust you. And it, it's probably, a, I don't want to say less effective to us because we're marketers and we know it's retargeting. Because you know, the way it kind of works is like, oh, I just saw it, went to this guy's website, now I see him everywhere. I must, he must be a big deal, right? I mean, we know what retargeting is and all that. But it's something that's been you know, instilled in our heads for so long now that even though um, we, we know what's going on, it still kind of has that effect on us. Maybe to a lesser extent, I'm, I'm unsure. You know, I haven't done a scientific study on it. Uh, all I can say is that it's worked pretty well for me. So when it comes to things like omnipresence, there's nowhere, you, you can't skimp on anything, okay? So, you know, we're spending hundreds of dollars a day on ads. I, I don't care because I know we're going to make it up. That's, that's one thing a lot of people don't really realize is they don't want to invest. But if you invest now, you're going to reap so many more rewards later. You might as well. So instead of just spending, you know, like throwing up a JV ad or something like that and spending $5 a day, uh, we throw up like, you know, three or four and just set them all to $100 a day and kind of just let them chill, do whatever. So we'll spend like $10,000 to $12,000 on ads, 
but it's okay because we go back and we make seven hundred thousand dollars in profit over the course of you know like three weeks. So it was mm -hmm. like not that big of a deal. Plus, you know, um, as any business, we have a bank account specifically for these types of things. You know, uh, we don't treat it as a cash flow business where uh, whenever money comes in, we just withdraw it or whatever. We um, leave like at least. See, this, I don't want to throw out numbers because it's going to be kind of intimidating to like newer marketers or anything like that. But we typically have like around $150,000 in our PayPal for anything like this that needs to be done. So uh, if we need copy, uh, design, stuff like that. But anyways, off, off topic there. Uh, the point is, is the omnipresence. So when it comes, if you can put your launch somewhere or your product or whatever, uh, and this applies to your customers as well, not just to get affiliates or anything like that, Put it everywhere you can. So do uh, the Facebook ads, YouTube ads, uh, display network ads, get it posting on Facebook, pay your friends to post about it, whatever you can. And if you know if they're your really good friends, maybe they won't even charge you. <laughs> Who knows? But then again, it's business, so I would expect them to charge you. I wouldn't. I obviously wouldn't be offended if one of my friends asked me to pay them because I understand that it's business. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another huge role, and that was actually a, the huge shift for me, Stephen. Um, that's how we were able to start doing those huge launches like uh, you know we went from like twenty thousand dollar launches to doing half million dollar launches and uh, the whole reason for that was in my opinion the omnipresence in reality so, so there's three things then you have the mission statement for your brand where everything matches that you know everything connects with that and jives with that you yeah. have the omnipresence where you're seen everywhere you know where they could be on fucking CNN and an ad of Devin Sanders is going to come up because you're running retargeting. Uh, and then you have that. So you got omnipresence. You got um, the brand, the brand message, and then you got treat it like a business, right? So yeah, you got to budget. That's what I'm getting to is is not necessarily budget, but here here's the issue: is people don't want to invest in themselves, and they're always looking for shortcuts and easy way outs. Which yeah, let's be honest, you can't afford to do in business. So people. I mean, sure, I mean, it'll go fine, okay, you'll make money, but why, like, hinder yourself and keep yourself from making the money that you could make? So, for instance, let's take copywriting, for example. People are still out there, and they're looking for the world for, like, a $500 copywriter, and in reality, when I'm going out to hire a copywriter, uh, we're looking to spend, like, fifteen to $20,000. Uh, depends on what brand it is, obviously, so for, like, um, my normal product, uh, let's say, uh, let, let me give two examples here. So for Ecom Premier Academy, we had a copy budget set aside. It was $30,000. And then um, for Ad Respark, my upcoming launch here, we were looking to spend like $5,000. And in, in, in reality, we actually spent a lot less than that. But the, the only reason is because I'm going to edit the copy myself, which kind of sucks. But it's okay because we, we do that anyways. The, the point is, is never skimp on anything. You should always be spending a lot of money on designers. You want to have the best design because you want to represent your brand in a professional way. Every single thing you do, like I said, should be congruent with your brand. So if we're talking about how uh, great we are, you know, we're making $50,000 a day, right? That's one of the things our brand talks about. Why would we ever skimp on a designer and get a bad design or something like that? So if you're coming out with something, that boasts or like, oh, it's so revolutionary and it's so life-changing, yet you have a design from 2001 that doesn't seem very revolutionary to me, uh, things like that, you know. And, and it's really important in every single aspect. So you got to spend the money. You have to be willing to invest in the, the ads, right? You have to be willing to invest in designers. Uh, we had, I think I hired four different people to do sales pages for Ecom uh, Premier Academy, and I went with one of them. Uh, here's a fun fact to everybody. Okay, so I hired four designers for Ecom Premier Academy. I think three of them were about $25 an hour. We, we don't do the whole, like, uh, yeah, we'll just pay you $1,000, right? We just pay by the hour because we hire, uh, we don't hire within this, this industry. We hire from, like, the tech industry. And then we had a designer that was $70 an hour. Ultimately, we went with a designer who was $70 an hour because, I mean, the $70 an hour results are better. But here's what something that really blew me away was the guy who was $70 an hour got it done in three days it only cost me about a thousand dollars and then the other three guys took weeks and they were a lot more expensive so when you pay for high quality stuff these people know what they're doing they get it done a lot quicker and surprisingly enough 
they're cheaper. And I've not only found this in uh, the design space, but also in the programming space. So if you're looking for a programmer, a lot of the times it's cheaper to get that 50 to $60 an hour programmer than it would be to go get a $20 an hour one because they're that much more experienced and they really know what they're doing, they get it done. But yeah, willing, the willingness to invest in yourself. Because, I, I don't know, people just get so scared. They're like, well, I don't really have the money. Well, how do you expect to make money if you're not willing to take risks or do all these things? It's going to pay off all these little yeah. things, because then you show it to your customers, they're more willing to buy, you show it to affiliates, they want to promote. Ugh. You know, I, this is something I just I wish. want to jump in and ask you about this part, because I think we're all, well, I'm not going to say we're all, but a lot of people are lured in, because it, there is a certain way that we have to sell to get people all misty and wanting to buy, like the message still needs to come through, and it needs to be in a salesy fashion. So as the people come in and they want to do their launch, they're not necessarily geared towards business. And I think that's one of the not notable distinctions that you're bringing to this call right now that I, perhaps people don't pay attention to as much because they hear people say you should have a business, you should have a business. And most of the people that are screaming that are the ones that probably don't actually have a business that they're running. So where did you, like, because you mentioned you were doing the $20,000 launches and you've, you've grown incrementally. So at what point were you like, holy shit, I need to switch this up and turn this into a, a business mindset? Or was it business mindset from the beginning and you just kind of grew and built on that over time and how long? Because that's, that's, that's something people are going to want to know, right? Because they don't have the 15, the 20, the 30,000 to set aside. So where did you come up with that business mindset and did you grow in an incremental way? All right, well, it's, it's funny you ask that because I was going to touch on next. So 99% of the people who are doing this whole launch thing right now, or whatever you want to call it, right, they're launching products, they're doing it, in my opinion, they're hobbyists. They're not entrepreneurs. They'll say they're entrepreneurs. They'll say they're business people. You guys have a hobby, and you kind of run with it, which is cool because, you know, I was in that same spot, and we all did it there as well. And I'm not obviously calling anyone out directly. I Obviously, this is just an, it's an opinion. It's not a fact before anybody tries to kill me. Um, Actually, that shift um, really happened this year for me, and that's why this year was such a huge breakout for me. Like 2000, well, I guess last year, 2015 was a huge breakout. So we found success in 2014, and that's when we started to realize, okay, we're like, okay. But that wasn't really um, me turning into a business. That was me just saying, hey, I should be putting more effort into everything I do. So 2014, that's when we started doing all the Facebook ads and personalized videos and stuff like that. And we, you know, we were putting in. Uh, effort and that that was doing well for us that took us to those you know four hundred thousand and those five hundred thousand dollar launches it was just the extra effort that was that's all it really takes is you sitting down and putting in the effort doing everything it takes planning out you need to uh, one good thing to do but this this is more on like the business side uh, when I started to transition into business but one thing I think everybody should do is get a project manager just hire one and Tell them everything you need to get done, and then tell them to make sure it gets done. Whether it's bossing you around, a project manager might turn out to be your boss. A lot of people might have issues with that because they're like, "Oh, I joined this, so I don't have to have a job anymore." But do that, and then uh, they'll also take care of your employees as well. Anyways, so really, effort was the huge shift for me to the, I would say, mid success I, to me, you know, like four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Um, this is just my opinion. This is my standards I set for myself. It's like, okay, uh, you know, I would be happy with it. I would be let down because that means I'm not growing, and I, I never want to be in a, sh a place where I'm I'm not growing. You know, I always want to be constantly aiming for uh, unattainable things, really. So if I do fail, I still did way better than I would have if I had shot for, you know, like 500000 or whatever. So, um, like I said, it really, the the, the first step four was the effort. So we started investing a little bit more instead of uh, going, uh, well, okay, so here's one thing we would do. So like you said, we didn't have the money, right? A lot of people didn't have the money at that time. And what we did was we hired $25,000 copywriters and we definitely didn't have the money. So what we did was we just worked out a deal with them where we paid them afterwards and they got like what is known as revenue share. So basically, uh, I know you guys are familiar with that. For anyone who doesn't know what it is, uh, let's say we give 10% gross rev share. That means if our launch did $400,000, they would get $40,000 because that's 10% of gross. So what we did was we gave them 10% of gross capped out at 30,000. So we ended up doing like $420,000 and we ended up paying them $30,000, which was okay because we made a lot more money than I think we would have if we had not hired them. 
And that's something people need to understand. But okay, I want to talk about, uh, that's just the effort. If, if people put in more effort, they'll do a lot better. Uh, put more effort into your designs, your affiliate recruitment, everything like that. And it, it's simple things such as messaging them and offering to help in any way you can. Uh, how can I make this the best for your customers? How can I ensure that this is the most profitable promo for you? And that's what I like to call um, the irresistible offer because at that point, you've made it so easy for them to promote by allowing them, you know, giving them everything they need on a silver platter. And it's so easy for them to promote and make so much money that it would hurt them not to promote because they're like, God, it's to the point where it's like, God, he's made it so easy for me. And I know I'm going to make so much money and I had something else planned, but I have to do this because, I mean, let's be honest here, we're, it's coming from a business standpoint and a lot of the times we're going to do what's best for our business, at least you should. And a lot of the time, if it's helping your customers and it's making you a lot of money, that's the best thing for your business. So making what I, I call irre irresistible offers, excellent thing to do. And the way to do that is just message affiliates as much as you can to the point where it's annoying. Trust me, I've had affiliates like, can you stop messaging me? No. Uh, <laughs> and you just make it as easy as you can. Literally everything. So every time you have an update or anything like that, hey, here's this, here's that, here's this. Do you need me to set up a page for you? Do you want my team to build something for you? Uh, stuff like that. Irresistible offer. Awesome. But then the huge shift for me was when I, I did start treating it like a business. And the first step to treating it like a business is hiring your first employees, honestly. So I had employees before in the past, but not like this. So now, um, I mean, we have a, so let's take a look at Ecom Premier Academy. Um, we have like a CEO, CMO, COO, project manager, four copywriters, uh, two programmers, uh, four designers, all these different things. And what happens is now, you really are getting stuff done, okay? And one thing that happens is you, you, you're you starting to see a lot more quality and every single thing you're getting done, everything is getting done a lot quicker and smoother, which allows you to have more time to focus on the important things, okay? So, for example, I think um, Wyatt and I recorded a video on seven-figure uh, affiliate promos and seven-figure launches, and what we said, well, what I said was the most important thing is hiring an affiliate manager uh, because... One thing that's going to help your affiliates make a lot more money, and this is this really pisses me off. Let me let me talk about this because people are like, "Well, I wish I'm not going to talk to your affiliate manager. That's impersonal." Sorry, I'm trying to make you more money. I can't afford to give you all the time that my affiliate manager can. My affiliate manager is going to be here every single day, trying to help you, doing whatever it takes to help you. And if it was you talking to me, I'm running a whole company here. I don't have time to do that all day. You're not going to get as much. Work with my affiliate manager. She is just as good as I am. She will do all this for you. So I think that's one thing that people need. And no, I'm not talking about I'll partner up with someone as an affiliate manager, right? I mean, uh, I've done that. People hire me as affiliate managers and do all that. That's cool and all. But when they hire me, I'm just passing it off to my affiliate manager. You, you see what I'm saying? And um, I pay her very well, actually. I pay her in uh, gross revenue. It's also because she's my girlfriend. It's pretty lucky, <laughs> but you don't have to pay them a lot. So what you're going to want to do is just find a charming person, a uh, charming person who truly cares about the customers, very important, cares about the customers, and cares about your affiliate success because, um, you know, affiliates are like an asset to you and so are the customers, and you have to make sure. Um, I recently saw Jeff Hoffman speak. He's the founder of Priceline.com, billionaire, uh, best speaker I've ever heard. And he, he gave this speech, and this is kind of the way you should treat your customers and your affiliates. So basically what he said is they hired a new programmer uh, for this company, amazing talent. This guy's out of this world good, right? And it was his first day at the company. He, the programmer had just started working there, and they were in the middle of, middle of a board meeting or a staff meeting or something. And he didn't know who Jeff Hoffman was, though. Jeff Hoffman's the CEO of the company, the owner and CEO, walks into the meeting, opens the door. He's like, hey, can I get anything for you guys? You guys need anything? You good? And then the new programmer is like, yeah, can you do my dry cleaning for me? Right? So it's this, this new programmer, you know, probably making like sixty to $100,000 a year, maybe more if he was really that good, asking the billion-dollar founder of Priceline to do his dry cleaning. And, of course, Jeff Hoffman says, yes, of course I'll do that for you. And then one of the VPs of the company, uh, after Jeff leaves, chases Jeff down the hallway and he's like, are you really going to get this kid's dry cleaning? Are you really going to do that for him? He's like, yes, I will. And if he wants me to wash his car after I pick up his dry cleaning, I'll do that too. Because that's what you need to do, right? If there's somebody that's so important to your company, you need to do everything it is to take care of them. And then, oh, man, once I heard him, like, I heard that speech, I was like, wow. And then your, your employee should be treated the same way as well. If they're a valuable asset to your company, 
you should be doing everything you can to make sure that they're sticking on with you and doing the best they can because you don't want to lose them. Because yeah, there's some people that are replaceable, there's some that are not so easily replaced. So in the instance of this programmer, he was so good that he was kind of irreplaceable. So Jeff, of course, wanted to do everything he could to keep him. And he knows that that little work he does or whatever is going to make him more money in the long run. So that's kind of how it goes. And then when you have an affiliate manager like that, it can really allow you to take care of your affiliates in a way you can't. And to anybody who says it's impersonal, those are the, those are the hobbyists. Let's be honest here. Um, they maybe might not understand business completely, and that is something that they should work on. I mean, you don't have to treat it like a business unless you want to make, you know, like tens of millions of dollars. Then it might be a smart idea to start treating it like a business. And, you know, not everybody wants that, so uh, that's okay. But, you know, like I said, um, I, I want to constantly keep growing. So w once you get those employees down, though, man, it's just like a whole other world. And it, it's, it's odd how easy it becomes because you can be doing so much at once. Like, I think I came out, so this month I've been working on one promo, right? It's just one thing, one huge promo, and we're hoping it's very successful. We'll see. It's, it's going extremely well so far. Um, but during this time, I've had two courses created, two softwares created, and... Um, ton of designs made for some stuff. Ooh, actually, and then another software, Perfected. And all this time, I did not, all I did was have my project manager, like, handle them. And I'm sitting back. I think I got on, I, I spent maybe, like, six hours total working on that stuff, and that was maybe, like, brainstorming the idea. I had a one-hour call with my two partners over at EPA and stuff. So once you get your business working for you, it allows you to have more time to focus on the big things. So, for example... I've been working on this promo, which uh, has been a month-long promo, which a lot of people won't do. A lot of people don't want to invest time and money into it. So just to give an example of how this promo is going, uh, we've done one webinar so far out of four. It's going to be a four-webinar promo, and uh, it's looking like we're going to do uh, between 1.5 million and 2 million in sales on this promo. And um, so here's kind of how it happened. Uh, I just randomly came up with the idea. It's weird. I was shooting a video for, um, and this is just to show the kind of effort and how you should be investing in yourself, right? And this is huge on branding as well. So it, it all ties together, just like I said. Um, what we did was, I was shooting a video. I don't even know why. I was just like, I randomly one day, I just grabbed my cell phone and I shot a video. I actually had just dropped off uh, Kelsey at the airport. She was going down to Miami to do work for me, you know, like, saying I'm, she was going to a meeting for me because I had to stay here and work. And um, what happened was I shot this video and I was like, man, I'm pumped up. I'm pumped up. I'm just going to do this whole month about this video. And I'm going to share my screen again here. So what happened was I decided to build something. And I came up with nitrobomb.com. And it, it was all about taking massive action. So you guys see my screen right now. You see this website. Uh, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to show you guys how this came about because this is a, uh, let me see here. This was just something I totally came up with on a whim and I was like, all right, let's make a website. And this is what it looked like. I just randomly, I rushed, I got home and I was like, okay, I need to do this. So I really quickly drew up a website with coffee. You know, it looks like shit, really. And I just explained it to my designer and I was like, look, this is the elements, this is what needs to go where. This is how it should be. And then uh, without the blog, um, I gave him $2,000, basically. And he came back to me in three days with this blog. And, uh, yeah, I mean, people uh, are loving it so far. It's, it's so simple. And the, the whole idea is it to just focus on the content. But that, that's kind of what I'm saying is, like, a lot of people wouldn't take this kind of effort. They would just... I, don't, I honestly don't even know what I would do in this position, but it was so easy for me to just go home, instantly draw up a blog, took me 20 minutes, plan out this brand, and the whole brand. And one thing is when you really feel um, aligned with your brand and you, you truly agree with the message it sends, it's so much more powerful. So, for instance, I actually cried on the first webinar we did because <laughs> I was so moved. Um, the whole brand is about uh, making 2016 my customer's year and my year as well. I'm on the journey with them. I'm trying to be healthier, and I'm trying to make a lot more money this year as well. So it's kind of a journey we're taking together, and I've conveyed that in every single thing we do. So, um, so let's uh, go look at one of these, for example. Right here, I, I give a 
a seven minute speech about how comfort kills and that's kind of what I came up with for the year is uh, hashtag comfort kills and it's just all motivation and talking about how 2016 is going to be our best year ever and I give them tips on how they can do it and all that and then at the end it's just super valuable training and then you know then there's creepy me at the end saying sign up for the webinar above right <laughs> and it's just really cool because we put so much effort into it and then you'll notice we have this video here and this is the lead up and this kind of just like gets into the vibe so it was it's supposed to be like top secret classified leaked information right and then on top of that it's uh because it's their unfair advantage to absolutely destroy 2016 right and this I spent the first night so I drew up the website and then I went home and I I spent three hours or so building this video just getting ready and it's just really cool build up to the webinar and then it's got all of our students proof on it and stuff and it's just to motivate them like hey you know 2016 really is your year and this is going to be amazing and then I mean what we're selling is a course that I came from you know I, um, I I have it to thank for a lot of my success I stole all my sales tactics from it basically and <laughs> funnily enough Ecom Premier Academy is modeled after the way they model everything so it's something I truly believe in I want them to succeed right everything is aligned so we, we put in our effort we put in the branding The branding on this is absolutely out of this world wonderful so you'll notice that it even has like that whole top secret vibe right and um, everything's aligned the message is there in every single post from you know the, the first video is just a quick 11 minute pep talk about how badly I want them to succeed and everything and it, it's just it, you know it's out of this world oh, God, I just, yeah and then I I got so emotional on the first webinar that I cried I was talking about how badly I wanted them to succeed and I had to look away because I was tearing up as a uh, but you know so it's so this is the example of everything you were talking about, you know. You this is, you, this is like the most recent example, yeah. Yeah. And so it's got the it's got the message, it's got the effort, it's got the the you treat it like a business. You got it built in in three days. Put a little bit of money towards it. Um, and obviously, what would you say, like, uh, if 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 someone's watching this right now and they're like, oh my gosh, but I'm like a one man team, you know, like I don't know. I don't have time to design a website and eight day eight days worth of content. What would you say? Like how 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 would you direct someone to find a project manager and like where do you pay that person? Look, okay, I um I can't speak I actually just released we just released a course on that, finally enough uh, last night. Um I don't know. I just go to Upwork. Well, the best thing to do is Google it. You know, is it time for a project manager or anything? But I, I kind of want to actually give people an example of how this is actually treated like a business. So mm -hmm. the only thing I even did here was uh, the only thing I did was create the video intro and create my little pep talks at the beginning of them. So like I created the intro. That took one one night, right? And then I, I would do these little pep talks at the beginning. And then this content, I paid a coach to write it. Um, it's like a thousand dollars, and I got eight videos. And this guy, I'm not gonna name any names. Um, I mean, if you watch the videos, people will be able to tell. But he's a, uh, oh man, amazing. He runs a media agent. Oh, actually, you know, Bill, I think you had him on a webinar recently. Uh, at that, uh, he owns a media buy agency. Does a lot of Facebook ads and. Uh, mm, right. I won't. I won't. I won't release the name. It seems like we're trying to keep it there. But definitely, I have. I have spoken with that guy. Good guy. Yeah. So paid him to create all our content. Uh, that and everything else. All the designs you see, um, this is from our designer. Uh, then everything else was from our web programmer. But th honestly, the way to do it, man, it's hard. It's it's hard at first. But the, the thing is, it's only hard for like three weeks. And I think that's what kind of overwhelms people. They're like, I don't want to hire project managers because I don't know what to do. Well, do a little research on it. Maybe read a book on it. That's God, this sounds so cheesy. But I feel like Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez is a cool guy, though. For, for all of you guys who hate Ty Lopez, Ty Lopez is a cool guy. But, you know, like, go out there, read some books on it. I've got, I buy, like, five books a week. So get out there and read. But the best way is actually, I, I recommended this to one of my students recently because she's become wildly successful in her e-commerce business to the point where she needs to delegate because she can't handle the load. I was So I got on an hour-long call with her. I was like, just go to Upwork, okay, do stupid things. Okay, so there's little things you need to do when you're on Upwork, right, such as basically make them answer a trick question. So at the bottom, uh, just put like, uh, what is 10 plus 10? Please answer with 10, 10. And then you leave a question that says, what is 10 plus 10? And a lot of people will answer 20. And then you know they didn't actually read your job post. They're just going around applying to every job. So just simple things like that to weed people out. 
And then uh, interviews. You have to interview. You got to make sure people are on the same page as you. And that's something that I really messed up on. So I, I can't speak on this enough because I recently hired two programmers, wasted $15,000, had absolutely nothing to show for it because I didn't interview them properly. So when you're hiring, make sure you do the interview and just do a little research on it. Research is your best friend. Okay? If you want to get something done, follow in the footsteps of someone who has done it already. They know what they're doing. They've done it before. So do your research and then you can hire a project manager. And then uh, it's simple. When you get to the project manager, you want someone who's done it before. You see, like, for example, our project manager, she started out new. She's good now, but it was very difficult for her at the start. It was difficult for everyone. So you hire someone who's experienced with it, and then you just kind of tell them what your tasks are and deadlines and who's doing the tasks and stuff like that, and then they'll just ensure it all gets done. And if they need to contact you or if they need you for anything, they'll just let you know, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically like putting a barrier between you and all the tasks you have, you know, because like well, if, it, if it was a one-man team, you know, you have to talk to the developers all day. You have to talk to the copywriter. You have to talk to the affiliates. And yeah. instead, you're putting that person in front of you who then only comes to you with the most important things. Is that how it is? Basically, and it's a lot easier for me because our project manager works here. So I don't have to like get on a Skype call or something or just drop what I'm doing. I just like yell across the room, hey, can you make sure that you know Andrew gets the website done today, please? Right. <laughs> so that's that makes it a lot easier. But cool. I mean it's the same it's the same way. You just get on Slack or whatever, you get Slack um, or you just Skype them. Hey, can you make sure this gets done? Okay, will do. Thanks. And they go out there and get it done while well, you focus on whatever it is that is going to make you the most money. Because all these mm -hmm. things come together and make you a lot of money, but obviously there's the most important tasks that you need to do. So for me, it's like writing emails um, and uh, editing sales copy is what I spend my time doing and writing DSLs and stuff like that. And then just planning, a lot of planning. We have everything planned out until like May which is, it could be better. We could have it planned out for the whole year, but May's not bad, so. That's cool, man. Bill, do you have anything you want No, man, I'm just looking at this, and it's, to me, it's like, the moral of the story is, as you want to grow, because the key is, is identifying whether you are a hobbyist or whether you're a business owner, and then if you are a business owner, to me, everything that you just finished saying was, look, I put a team in place so I can think some cool shit up, and when I do, I can get them to apply it so I can follow that vision along. Like, mm -hmm. and that, that's where people stop because you said it a few times. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. Hire somebody. It takes work. So to me, it sounds like if you want to grow a successful business or, or launching thing, as we're calling it, if you want to get better at launching your own products and, and doing it with bigger results, man up, get to work, and, and employ a team to help you get your ideas done and, and make the brand everything you want it to be. Like, I'm just trying to sum it up. But that's, to me, that's what it seems like, right? I mean, that's what it is. It's really just stop messing around. Call it what it is. It's a business. And, I mean, I think everybody should switch because, to me, since I've started treating it more like a business instead of a hobby, hobbies can, like, who knew hobbies could be stressful? Who knew being a one-man team could be so stressful, right? But it is. I'm, I'm, like, happier. I have more free time and more money than I've ever had before. And it's all because of that. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to spend money on like all this staff because then I'll have less money. That's not how this works. You spend money on the staff and in the long run you have a lot more money. Okay? So people need to just get over like that spending money on stuff. And it, it, it goes the same way. I think our industry's got a pretty bad rap for that. So it, it's the same way with the customers. Uh, that's one thing I try to explain to my customers is guys please stop complaining about that extra ten dollar cost that was tacked on. Okay, I'm sorry that this app that you spent ten dollars and I'm, I'm talking about Shopify apps mostly. Um, I'm sorry that that ten dollar app is going to make you an extra five hundred dollars this month. Oh man, you know, like, <laughs> oh, what a what a pain, right? So things like that. I, just, I can definitely I can definitely attest to, uh, to putting a little more effort and and money in. I, I think I want, I've been doing this a long time, and uh, I think probably in September of 2015, I was just like, you know what, I'm tired of trying so hard. You know, like I'm tired of working on a product and having to spend 80 to 120 hours doing everything. And so I started delegating a little bit more, started outsourcing, 
uh, to the point like now when we when I release a product, you know, right, I don't spend as much as you, Devin, but right off the bat, we got ten thousand dollars that goes into copy and design and just you know. Uh, VSLs and then kind of like you all I have to do is go in and edit it and then in the last three months alone I've seen my my products go from 50,000 25 30,000 gross to uh, 100,000 then I did 150 and then I did 250 and that's just putting in more effort and huh I said yeah buddy yeah that's just putting in more effort and and it, it, and it's it's weird you know I remember like the first time I paid I actually paid a lot of money for copy. I was like, ugh, you know, like, ugh. Do you remember the first copywriter I hired? Because I do. Yeah, I do, I do. It was you. Yeah, yeah I know. That's how I met yeah, Steve. I, I hired him to write my copy for my first product years ago. Uh, it, it made me feel so sick paying all that money, but then I made I'm, a lot more money because these, I mean, when you hire someone who knows what they're doing, you know, not only do you get more customers, which means more money on the front, but then you got more money from the webinar and from treating them right, and you get a bigger brand, and it just snowballs. And so, I think if you're, you know, if you're somebody watching this right now, and you're like, I don't want to spend money on copy, I don't want to spend money on ads, you know, then then Devin's right. You know, maybe you need to have a little wake up, come to Jesus meeting. But um, Steven, I actually want to I want to talk about something you said real quick. So you said like it made you sick to pay that much money. And that's that's like one thing where people are getting this wrong, you know. Like that's why you need that separate bank account to have money set aside for your business, because everything, all the revenue, if it's a real business, all the revenue your launches or whatever generate, not all that money is yours. Some of that money belongs to the business. I mean, you have the tax money, right? Then you have the money that goes back into the business, and then you have your cut, right? So, in reality, that shouldn't even be like a big thing. To, to anybody doing this, because what they need to realize is that was never your money in the first place. That was your business's mm -hmm. money, and it's going to help your I, your business grow ten times larger. Mm -hmm. And since I started doing that, I actually have a budget, you know. And I I tell all my students, you know, as like you need to learn to budget not only for yourself but for your business, you know. Like for me, when I'm budgeting, just right off the bat, thirty five percent comes back out for the business. I got twenty percent for taxes because my accountant's awesome and then 15% for reinvestment in the business. Then everything else, I budget off personally. So I'm never, like now, I'm never worried about paying money for anything because I have an account for that. You know, I have an account for taxes. I have an account for copy. I have an account for design. And it just, it, it, it makes it so much easier when you can separate it. So if you're the type of person where you're like, oh, I have one bank account, well, call up your bank lady and tell her to open you six or seven different accounts and, yeah, and fucking get taxes. to work, guys. If you can't budget, you're going to be up for a wake-up call, especially from the IRS. You know, they love to knock on your door and say, hey, look, you're running a business with not much overhead. There's a $35,000, dollars $50,000 tax bill that you have to pay. And you're like, holy shit. But if you, would, if you would invest in yourself, invest in good accountants and budget, I mean, you sleep a lot easier and you get better quality stuff done, just like Devin is saying. So I think this has been very useful. Yeah, everyone, if, if anybody out there is looking for an accounting service, just use .co. Hey, Rock. Is it like a bookmarking, or do they actually do your accounting for you? They just do bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, right. right. Yeah, now they so, do bookkeeping. Yeah. They actually, they just recently started doing your filing as well, if you do so choose, but it's, it's an extra cost. Okay, so just to give people a perspective on that, I was paying my CPA $1,000 a month, and I came into Bench, and I paid $1,200 a year, and they're a lot better than my accountant was. So I actually use uh, CPA on Fire. You heard of him? He no. does it. He does. Uh, he does all the work for Entrepreneur on Fire, the podcast. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Entrepreneur yeah. on Fire, and then yeah, his accountant is amazing. His name is Josh B. If you're looking for an accountant to set you up, like say say you live in a, a state that's heavily taxed, not only uh, from the state level, but then of course you have the federal level. He'll set you up as an online business in like Nevada or whatever. So if you're looking for an accountant. Is it or Florida? A Florida yeah. guy. Tennessee has a good too. I didn't have to switch at all, but he'll he'll set you up with an account uh, with a business in the in the correct state and set you up to save the most money uh, year after year. So if you if you check out CPA on Fire, tell him I sent you because that dude is the best. He's the bomb. Yeah, he's he a, he's a, get a month free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's this disclaimer.
He's uh, it's well, he doesn't charge monthly; he charges yearly. But he's not too bad. Um, but he's he's seriously the best. Like he called up the IRS for three hours and uh, sat on the phone for me. <laughs> I was like, dude, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> but thanks. I oh man, see, I'd have been like, yes, you do have to do that. Maybe that's <laughs> like, thanks, bud. I take it. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't very appreciative, but uh, seriously, when you invest in yourself and you invest in your business, things just start to happen, and it's it's great. So, and start reading, awesome. start reading, because that's the key. Like talking about the books is if you don't understand how business works, like that you you mentioned it, Devin, is the books that you're buying and the volume that you're buying. And I noticed that while you're still spending that money, the books that you buy are the ones that teach you about the business and help you learn how to actually grow a business. If all you're doing is consuming the next magical shiny button product, you're probably not growing a business. You're just learning some gimmicks and some hooks. So get out there and start reading too. And I'm still that's guilty of that. Well, people should be replacing their like time watching Netflix and you know Hulu and TV, Lost and The Bachelor or whatever. Um, probably better spent on on books. But that that comes back to the whole internet freedom lifestyle. People don't want to do that. So you know, I mean, that's just, there's a disconnect. You know, some people don't want to run a business. Cool. Awesome. Well, I think this has been a very helpful call. I really appreciate you coming on, dude. You've really dropped some uh, some wisdom bombs. Is there any <laughs> is there any any like any link you want to advertise or tell people to check you out at or? Nah, man. If you want to check me out, man, just look Devin Zander up on Facebook and follow me, and then promote my launches. <laughs> awesome, dude. Right awesome. on, dude. Thanks a lot, Devin. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks so much for having me on, man. It was fun. Always humbled to come and talk for you guys' audiences. I'm just, you know, some kid in Florida, so when people want to hear what I have to say, it means a lot. So thanks again, guys. Well, thank you, buddy. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon.